Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I am here with Tom and Dom on this wonderful Sunday morning for another episode of Jump Point, uh, the critically acclaimed series where we make controversial comments about <laughs> Battletech. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Battletech eras and the best and worst eras of Battletech. Uh, so... Uh, we'll, we'll have some strong opinions here, guys. All right. I expect to hear all the nastiness oh, yes. in the comments. Um, and, uh, and that reminds me, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, feel, uh, feel free to comment as we go. Um, but we're actually going to start today's episode with a little patron Q and a, uh, so thanks to all of our patrons out there, of course, for, uh, for keeping the lights on. Uh, this question is from Zul and Zul asked, what mech were you guys hoping for in the Kickstarter? Did you get it? Uh, and for me, it was the Hatamoto Chi, is what Zul said. So Zul got lucky. He got the Hatamoto Chi, came out in the Somerset Strikers pack, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, Tom, tell us, what, what were you hoping for, and did you get it? Yeah, there were, there were a bunch. Um, and I think we talked about it on one of the box set reviews. Maybe. But some of the original... Um, IWM minis that we started playing with, like the Centurion, um, those are the ones I really wanted to see. The Clint, right? And I, I believe we got them, right? We did. If we I'm got not the Clint. mistaken, yeah. yeah, those are the ones. Like you know, they're not super special standout, but like the, the Whitworth. We played with them a lot. Yeah, the Whitworth, the right? Whitworth. Like yeah. yeah. So those those real classic mechs, um, I was very excited for. I really, really wanted them to do the Kintaro, but mm. they didn't. Um, I think the boat has probably gone on that one because I think it would have naturally come out in one of the Comstar packs that they did in the last Kickstarter, but didn't materialize, which I think is a shame because it was a mech that was quite popular during the High Brain Scheme game, and the old metal model is not good at all. So I would have loved to have seen that, but maybe yeah. next time. But Kintaro is the quintessential mech pick if you remember from like kevin the sarna yeah it's it's the it's the oh. right yeah the the yeah. best illustration of a mech ever made i think <laughs> yeah 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 for me it was the mauler i was really amped to get a new mauler uh so that also in the somerset strikers uh, pack so pretty pretty stoked to replace all my junky 3d prints with uh <laughs> the sweet plastic mauler for for sure um all right so let's move on to rapid fire all right let's let's get off this here let's talk a little rapid fire era specific stuff here uh tom would you ever play pre third succession war <laughs> do, do you think i even know what that means that's a like, why just start galore. with lore yeah. no i galore. We totally know yeah i would absolutely i mean we talked about it in that box set review like that era, the foundational designs that become, you know, battle mechs. Uh, I love that. I love yeah. it a lot. I know you love the the OG era. I don't know. I wonder if that if that review will be out before this episode. I'm not sure, but if not, guys, sneak peek oh, yeah. uh, teaser. Uh, <laughs> if it hasn't come out, review. yeah, it will be. Um, Dom, what about you? Uh, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> really? I uh, yeah, because I think it's to me. There's kind of a separation between the the future history law, which yeah. is a bit of an oxymoron, but there you go. Um, I think for me, anything before the like the latter days of the succession war, so kind of going into like 30, 15, that kind of era, I think anything before that is just, to me, it's the, the history foundation of, of Battletech. I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't plan for it. I wouldn't structure it. I wouldn't build forces for it. I mean, if I rocked up at a, someone's house and they were playing a, 27 14 game yeah i'll count me in but i'm not going to plan for it myself no. interesting i actually really like the first succession war era where the tech is still you know developing right you have ER large yeah. and er ppcs but there's no clans right mm -hmm. it's sort of the same to me as like that that 30 40 era right 30 39 yeah. 30 48 like mm -hmm. that range right before the clans show up but after the hell memory core is discovered right so there's some neat mm -hmm. tech but it doesn't get ridiculous anyway uh next one rapid rapid fire number two favorite era uh tom what is your favorite era it's gonna be weird to say but like ill clan i think Ooh. yeah 
All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really into it. I love the blending of the, you know, clan tech into the inner sphere and all yeah, of that. Yeah, it's a bold statement. All right, I like it. Uh, Dom. Um, very specific in terms of era. It's the thirty thirty nine war. Mm. Um, so like end of the succession wars. That's where you kind of get the influx of new technology, but there are no clans. Yeah. So you still kind of have the classic battle tech, but it's um, clan haters. It's more sophisticated. And I know. Sorry, sorry, Jared Falcon. Uh, um, but like, you get like the LB ten X's double heats thing, so you can have right. like more, um, you know, interesting battles. But you don't have to deal with the OP clans. That's yeah. That that's where I'm I'm at too. Although you know, I'll I'll, I'll say that the Ill Clan is is rapidly catching up uh, for me. Yeah, fun. But I think that late succession wars time frame is definitely and and even up to the early clan invasion i think is very fun um all right so least favorite era oh the jihad yes <laughs> yeah, i mean yeah i think we can all agree on that i don't know oh my god like, it's, I just, don't, it's awful I, don't I i can't i don't like it i don't like the lore i don't like i was gonna say Blake. i don't like the don't, lore it should yeah, make no I sense. I love Word of Blake. I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Yeah. Um, Honestly, Dom, like what about the you? doldrums of the Succession Wars, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think... I mean, yeah, the Jihad era is not good. I think the Dark Age is actually worse, though, just because they have the industrial mech element to that, which is just, to me, so ugly. Yeah. And it kind of just... It just it no longer becomes battle tech, uh, uh, and that's what I do have an appreciation for, for Ill Calm because they've given us battle tech back. So yep. I would say Dark Age. I think. All right. Do the uh, clans make the game better or worse, Tom? Better. Dom. Okay. Um, better, but only after they fixed a lot of the problems. So, like in the initial clan invasion release, right? Much, much, much worse. But now it's they're, they're part of the universe; they're entrenched in it. It's much right. more interesting. What, so, yeah, yeah. What about just a lore perspective? Oh, better because they yeah. are the fulfillment of the Star League, right? Like it, yeah. it comes. It's secular. It's a beautiful romantic story that turns sour. So, yeah, right, yeah. I think so. I think I think better as well. I think it's very unique. Like it's almost that alien invasion sort of trope without the yeah. aliens. Like it's yeah. very cool. Um, I think it makes BattleTech very unique. Um, all right. So last rapid fire: Piranha versus Javelin, inner city map. All right. Dan is piloting the Piranha. Who wins? <laughs> is he using his orange dice? I mean, obviously. What else would he be using? <laughs> Those Wait, he's, in the, he, he's in the javelin. <laughs> he's in the piranha. Oh, the the piranha. Yeah, okay, piranha. Piranha wins. I got to go with the javelin. What do you think, Dom? Ooh, I'd go for piranha. I think the really it's much faster. Like it's a. I know in urban warfare, jump jets are beneficial, they are. but I think the loadout on the piranha is actually everyone just thinks it's machine guns. It's not. It has a couple of ARM lasers on there, so it can yeah. it'll take that javelin down. I think. All right, all right. Especially with Dan's orange dice. So yeah. So. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get into our ready room roundtable, shall we? Um, so a little bit, a little bit more in depth uh, and less tongue in cheek discussion here. Um, so let's talk about new players. We we always we we sort of have a theme talking about expanding the hobby, right, and and ensuring that it is accessible to new players and and fun for new players. Should new players always start? In that introductory thirty twenty five era, what do you think? Um, in VR? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I like how you the, brought the those question, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The question for me would be more about the system than the era. Mm. Okay. You, you know, I would phrase it differently. I would say, you know, do you start with alpha? Do you start with classic? With new players, what's important is to play whatever they're really excited about. So if, if they really latch on to the clans, it's worth just jumping in because that's what they want to yeah. do, right? You don't you don't need a baby. We're all adults. Even teenagers right. are adult yeah. kind of. A, I'm, I'm glad you made that point because that was basically segues beautifully into my point, which was I think if you'd have asked me 
two or three years ago, I absolutely would have said, yeah, start in succession laws because that's where you get the grounding. But now, especially like with the Ilkhan area where they've made it much more approachable and, you know, they've kind of, let's face it, they've fixed a lot of the problems that had come from the previous like decade across the Battletech ITP and beyond that. So I think the, you know, you can just go into Ilkhan era and play in the periphery and be like, oh, I'm just going to play Torians and we're only going to use regular AC weaponry and M lasers and we're going to strip out the, the electronic systems and the triple myomer, you know, whatever. You know, like you can you can get as elaborate as you want with it. You don't have to kind of pick up all the extended rule books. So but I think from a, the only caveat I'd say to that is the succession law era is very, very good for a lore introduction because that sets so much of the like universe up. So you've got things like, you know, yeah, like so you you know you can just go into that and have a very soft sell on like what the inner sphere is, and you know the, like the technology bases. And you know, if you progress from that naturally, you get into the clan invasion era, and then you kind of get introduced to the, you know, to the whole clan experience. But it's all there anyway in Ilkhan, if you think about it. Like it's, I yeah, mean, some and- powers are not there anymore, but. Generally, it's it's there. So I don't know if there's a right answer to that, but would be interested, guys. Leave your thoughts in the comments um, when you introduce new players to the game. You know, where do you typically start in terms of era and why? Um, yeah. So let's talk about the clan invasion a little bit more. So initially, it wasn't so popular. Dom, you you hit on this um, earlier. There were a lot of issues with the rules and balance, and and even you know this predates battle value, if I'm not mistaken. When everything was tonnage balanced and you'd have a mad cat just like, you know, ripping things (laughs) apart. Um, So aside from sort of the game balancing features, what else do you think changed to really make that clan invasion era so popular um, that they had a whole Kickstarter based around it? Tom, why don't we start with you? Um, What do you think? Um, Man, that's a great question. Was that from a patron or did you come up with that one or did Dom? Who who came up with that? (laughs) Can't tell you. It's a Probably secret. Oh, secret. <laughs> um, that's really hard. I, I would say it, it's a really popular period of the lore for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the the um, the video games, the cartoon. There's a lot there for nostalgia, and this is definitely the era of nostalgia, right? Product. For real. So that's a big yeah. driver. Well, I, I think. How I else think do you if expand I can... it? If I can jump yeah. in, I think I think you you hit on for me what changed, right? The the video game and the cartoon were introduced way after the books were published, right? When was the clan invasion like the initial like book, like the TRO thirty fifty? What was the original publication date on that? I think it's probably early in people suspect it's like nineteen ninety. I think people I, that's, associate that's it what with I clan think. invasion. But- but I think it's it's a few years before that, I think. Right. I think so, too. And I think, you know, what made it popular yep. was like the video games, MechWarrior 2, and then subsequently yeah. the cartoon, which came out, when was that, 95? 94, I think. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah, you could be right. You could be right. Yeah. I don't know. It's somewhere It's somewhere in the, the yeah, the, the, the middle part of the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I think for me, like that's sort of what changed, and then like that gen, like our almost our age group, like you know, sort of. We've got the nostalgia for it now. We have the nostalgia for it, whereas like yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the the guys that are maybe ten years ahead of us, right, didn't they have that. It. Right, they hated it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's kind of interesting. That's at least my opinion on it. I don't know, Dom. What do you think? Exactly that. I mean, you just took the words out of my mouth, really. So there's no need to elaborate. Like I think it is. When it came out, the uh, the older the people who were playing it at the time, a lot of people were turned off by it and literally stopped playing the game. Yeah. Uh, but for us, it's so you know fundamental to the game experience. Like the clans, I love the clans really because they're wonderful belligerents. They're like fantastic antagonists. But right. yeah. you know, like it, they're they're not meant to be liked, right? They're meant to be the the bad guy. So they're beautiful. Every setting needs a bad guy. They're a brilliant bad guy. It's essential to Battletech versus, you know, early yeah. 90s, late 80s. Another like, it mech. just it wasn't a thing. Like, it wasn't as big. It's like, what is this new crap? It's almost like the way some people look at the old clan era right now, 
right? Yeah, and if yeah, BattleTech yeah. survives another good, 10 that's years. A very good analogy, yeah. Right? You know, they're like, oh, I hate that everything's intermingled, you know, but we like, I mean, we yeah. think it's cool, but there's a lot of people that do not yeah. like that. And so I wonder if, you know, if it survives another 10 years, right? This will just be sort of table stakes again. Yeah. yeah. Remind me too, the, the clicky tech or the click tech. Battletech. That was all Dark Ages. Dark Age. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Okay. Why? Which was yeah, weird. There were a lot of industrial mechs in there. Yeah. <laughs> so many. So many industrial mechs. So many. Um, I, ha- Too I have many. them, in a, I have them in a box somewhere. So let's talk <laughs> I had about. Actually give them away, but. I'm not yeah. Let's let's <laughs> talk about favorite and least favorite era real quick. So you know we all we all kind of agreed that you know we do like that clan invasion era. We talked about that extensively. I want to talk about the ill clan era in a little bit and why we all think that that's generally going in the right direction. But let's talk about what made some of the eras, in our opinion, bad. I want to I want to touch on that a little bit more. Um, so like you know we we rag on on the jihad a lot. <laughs> jihad, <laughs> like why? <laughs> like what about it? And the dark age too. Like what about that? That period in BattleTech history, um, what, what, are the, what, are the, what are the features of that that make us want to sort of pretend it doesn't exist? Like, what are the top things well, that jump out? Go ahead, Tom. Well, first off, okay, I like Word of Blake a lot. Okay, just to be clear, we know I have a very, I have a soft spot for them, <laughs> but the, I think the only reason it never worked for a lot of people is like, I don't know that the lore was thought out very well. And I don't know that it like the whole. I don't know that it ever really made a lot of sense in in BattleTech, right? Um, you know, like the whole bone thing and the secret. You know, I don't know. It just kind of came out of nowhere, right? Yeah, it, it was kind of like, alien yeah. too, right? Like, it's like someone slammed a reset button or was trying to on the lore. Um, yeah, and and yeah. I and I That's I think I want to I want to home in on something you just said where I think I think you just said like it didn't. It didn't feel like Battletech or like it didn't fit in. Like even if you look at the design of some of the Word of Blake mechs, which I know people love, like the ones with all the goofy fins on them and stuff, yeah. that does not I, that looks like a Gundam. No, it no. doesn't look like right. a Battletech, yeah. a battle mech from Battletech to me. Um, <laughs> and I know the proto mechs were, were they in that era, the thirty seventies? Is that when they came no, out? They're, no, they're in um, the era before. They're a, uh, they're a uh, Civil War era thing. They- Oh, oh, well, it's before that, isn't it? It's the actual Operation Bulldog. So you're talking 3060. Yeah, those are awful yeah. too. Like that was and like that the was beginning like of like that's there. the beginning of the awfulness. <laughs> yeah. Um, where like it just doesn't it? Do, you know, like if you look at all the eras individually, and there, you know, you look at all the the features and the mechs and the design cues. Like there's just this like middle part where you have like mechs with giant chainsaws and weird. Yeah, things that look like a. They party. tried a lot of stuff. They were they were doing some weird stuff, trying some weird things, um, and that to me is like why I didn't love it. And and I know there's a lot of fans out there that were really turned off by the way they just like wholesale massacred like a lot of people's favorite heroes, right? Um, and shut down and destroyed a bunch of units that you know that have been staples of BattleTech forever. Um, which I want to have another episode on this, but I want to. I want to just. Yeah. I want to plant the seed. It's very. You do need that, but it's very inconsistent. So in Game of Thrones, we got very used to like favorite people dying off every week. In BattleTech, it's like life is cheap. Battle mechs aren't, but like Jamie Wolf survives for like you know ninety right. years unscathed, yeah. and like yeah. Devlin Stone wades yeah. through fire, and like ridiculous, right? They all have like <laughs> plot armor, but then all of a sudden they're like all dead, right? Yeah. And it was just sort of, I don't know. It was very inconsistent, I thought. Um, so that for me is why, like that whole era was kind of like a, you know. But I do like what's happening now with the old clan. I will say that. Um, yeah, and Dark Ages again. Like I think we already hit on why we all sort of agree that doesn't wasn't great. What was up with the space shield? I talk about this all the time. Like where they put up the giant <laughs> space shield so nobody could jump in the, you know, in the in the space around Earth. Like how do you even do that? Like space is enormous. Like you can't come in from any angle. Like how yeah. did they ever even explain how they did that? I, I don't, don't know. Think so. Leave it in the comments it's just... if it's somewhere. Um <laughs> I, I I would love to know like what the what the what the rationale for that was. Um, Again, if you if you think about these things as like branches off the main story the trunk. then they're not so offensive yeah like the main trunk then they're they, cool because it gives you something to mess with 
but it's not affecting that, you know, the trunk. Right. Right. Um, but maybe I, th- I think as well, like it, the trunk. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you, there's a line that you cannot cross on an IP, right? So a good example is like the um, the HPG network. That is so fundamental to BattleTech and what right. BattleTech is, and it's and Comstar and these things just disappear, and then all of a sudden it's like I don't it's like to equate it, it's like taking Space Marines out of Warhammer Forty Thousand, right, or something. And I know that and the Ilkhan here is is trying to fix that. So you've got is it a Clan C Fox, a kind of the new Comstar, right? Is that right? I'm like, yeah. Well, yeah. I, that, um, that, that know, is that that's the way I read it, it too. Or... Well, I no, think it's, it's I think they're fixing it. I think they realized and I think they actually did a really good job. Let's segue into the next topic about the, the Ill Clan era. I think they mm-hmm. did a very, very good job of cleaning the mess up. Um, and, and in my opinion, I know some people we all have different opinions. I thought it was a mess. Mm-hmm. And I think Shattered Fortress started to bring things Agreed. back together and get stuff on pace. And now at, you know, thirty one, whatever, when when Wolf takes Terra they're at a very good like relaunch point, right? Where anything yep. can happen, right? Everything's sort of in motion. Jade Falcon's kind of wounded, like Hell's Horses is on the rise. Like all these different factions are competing, right? The mm-hmm. Commonwealth has all these splinters. Free Worlds League trying to reform. Combine has taken new Avalon, right? Like crazy things are starting to happen. It's sort of very reminiscent of of that 3025 era, like that turmoil. A lot of like so, rich stuff. Yeah. 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 There's like so many different places yeah. where I can play a game on the map and it makes sense. Right. right? Um, and that's and all we ask. I'm not asking ask. for perfection and perfect right. narratives. It's a, there's lots of writers, there's lots of different styles. Right. I just want the setting to be battle tech. That's, that's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If they introduce aliens in 3053, I quit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> starter. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I like they're all like they're like they just look like Tyranids. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh my god! Oh like my people god. would just genuinely oh my god. have heart attacks in the street. I think they would be. just they would die. I would just die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god! All right, let's let's do render blender. What do you think? Oh, we get a render blender. Yeah. Blend it up. Uh, so we've got the javelin here. Okay. Speaking, is this why you brought up the javelin earlier? Oh yeah, of course. Here it mm. is. Look at that. I love, love the man. I love the pose. Very yeah. nice. Uh, you know, little little walking about to, to unleash death from his chest. He looks like he's doing one of those. Do you ever watch power walking? That's like, like the Kintaro pose. He looks a little bit like you know, it's the Kintaro pose. He's yeah. motoring on. Not quite a sprint, but a power walk. All right, let me bring this up full screen, Tom, so you can b- begin your well, blending. He's got his arrow helmet on, which is cool. So maybe he is power walking. Yeah, this is such a great mech. I, I think we've di- I think we've disagreed before about the helmet style heads that I love. I love that style. I think Aaron, you don't, right? Oh, I I, I love them. I'm a oh, trebu- them? I'm okay. a trebuchet kind of guy. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Okay, Whitworth trebuchet we'll javelin, so many. Yeah, this is such a good design. Um, I I like. Everything about it I like a lot. I love the design of the shoulders and the arms. That center array of missiles is so cool because it kind of like juts out and it just looks like, you know, he looks at you with that little monkey face of his and you're dead, <laughs> you know? Yeah, he's kind of got a little monkey face going on. I, I um, see it now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great, right? Like, just imagine that. Like, you, you come up on his side profile and he just torso twists and you're like oh crap you know it's a monkey oh my god yeah it's great the legs the legs are well proportioned i think they have that kind of slim style it looks fast it looks deadly i love it this is like an a plus i should say um yeah the jump jets are really cool um he's got butt heat sinks which is pretty interesting you know so he's he's dropping fire i think is what they they call that that's right dropping heat great dropping heat yeah it's pretty funny uh, uh, but yeah, it's great, man. This is such a cool design. And what I assume you guys are suitably impressed as well. I I like this design. The one thing I, I will say that I really like about the the light ish mechs is like the sheer scale difference between like a yeah. locust and a javelin. Now yeah. it's only ten tons. Like at the upper end, a ninety to a hundred ton mech, like eh, you know, volumetrically, 
they're so big you don't really notice the difference. But like the difference between like a javelin and like a wasp, right? You're like, oh yeah, snap! Yeah. Like it I am so outgunned. Damage. I'm like fifty percent. <laughs> this thing's like fifty percent bigger than me, right? right. And it, yeah. And like to your point, like just the the imposing pose, like this this rookie, like who just got this the, the monkey javelin, is like, dude, I am like king <laughs> of the the city right now. Like, it's you know, like, no bug jung- can stand show. before me, right? Yeah, it's the jungle yeah. at least. Um, I, I imagine that scene in uh, The Godfather when he's walking down the street and the people are giving him fruit, you know? Uh, yeah. The Don, whatever his name is. <laughs> the Don, he's the Don, Don Corleone. Man. Yeah. No, no, not Don Corleone. The guy he kills. I can't remember. Oh, oh, name. right, 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 right. Yeah. He's like, a grazie, grazie, you know. Like that. Great. <laughs> That's Godfather Mech right there. The Godfather Mech. That's really funny. So, yeah, I do, I do like it. It's really, again, really well done. Um, actually, the, the old, fun, fun fact. The old IWN Javelin, it was Ralph Parth at the time, was like one of the one of the first or second metal minis I ever purchased um, well, when I was when I was starting my BattleTech collection back in the day. Yeah, I'm I'm just looking up the old picture of it too to compare, and the old one was great too. To be honest, it was one of yeah, the really like the old you Jeff, know yeah, yeah human styled, but I love that they brought that chest out more. Yeah. The other one yeah. was pretty flat. And this is really cool. All right, we digress. So that is that. So the render blender is is done, Tom. That's it. It's blended. It's filling and delicious. It is. It's a good one. I'm excited to, a to get that one. For sure. yeah. It's true. It's true. Um, all right. Well, father, yeah. <laughs> I'll never look at that mech the same. Yeah. I hope someone out there modifies like a javelin with like big ears and like a tail. <laughs> um and paints it with like you know like the light brown belly and like the dark yeah. brown everywhere else green stuff some fur. Love it. perfect there you go. perfect uh so that said all right let's wrap this one up a uh, couple of things one aries games and minis don't forget to check it out uh and two don't forget to subscribe i mentioned it in the beginning uh subscribe like leave a comment and if you want to help out the channel more uh you can come on over to patreon also you can submit patreon q a for uh for potential uh discussion on jump point uh but yes if you do want to help out patreon is the place to do that uh but that said i'm all wrapped up so guys thank you so much for watching and of course stay tuned always great stuff coming from death from above wargaming have a great day